Vancouver, Toronto, what is the more expensive city? What city gets you more bang for your buck for $1 million? Today we're gonna to be going on a property tour to see exactly how far $1 million can get you in both of these cities in Canada. Before that, my name is Kyle Mark, your Vancouver Realtor, and if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in Vancouver, I am definitely your partner for that. All my information is in the description below, so shoot me a text, an email, or book a call with me, and I will love to help you with your real state goals. So the age old question is what city in Canada is better? Is it Vancouver or is it the center of the universe in Toronto? People will have their pros and cons between each but what I want to do today is help you with your property search to see exactly what is better for you if you have one million dollars and what does one million dollars even get you? Can you get something within the city? How far out of each one of those uh, metropolis areas do you have to go to find what you are looking for? Are you going to be able to get a con a townhouse or even a detached market all those questions are going to be answered so let's go and take this property tour so exactly how this is going to work I've already opened up the MLS system and I'm going to take you through an MLS search so for your own interest in the buying process you can see exactly how this MLS system works on the back end and I've already found a property in Toronto that we're gonna navigate to right now. So what I did was I searched for around a million dollars to see what is the closest property to the city center of Toronto. And I did find that property on realtor.ca. And uh, what we're gonna be looking for is to match ideally the same search requirements over in Vancouver so we can have a good sample size of each one of these properties. So the property that we'll be focusing in on here in Toronto that fit the search parameters for this exercise is a property that just sits around 20 kilometers outside of the city center of Toronto. Uh, at that million dollar mark, trying to stay as close to the city as possible, this property comes in at $916,000. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take you through all of the photos, the specs, the stats, all that sort of fun stuff so that you can really fully understand what this price point gets you in relation to the proximity of Toronto as well as the quality of the build and the home in opposition to the property that we're going to find in Toronto. So this property here 8123 Applewood Lane as you can see it has that $916,000 price point. You can see from the photos itself that it has a very beautiful stone of veneer. Uh, it's very attractive with the landscaping as well as uh, you know, the exterior it itself. As we go down, uh, we're gonna do a live commentary. It has a nice open concept uh, living space. Uh, it has some nice detailing uh, behind the TV here with the feature wall. Lots of nice uh, cabinetry, uh, stainless steel appliances. You know, it, it comes in at just over 1,500 square feet. Uh, and that also has some nice detailing with the crown molding and uh, things of that nature as well. A little island here uh, to help with uh, your living space. I feel like the staging though is a little bit crammed. You probably want to have some smaller furniture in here to really be able to take advantage of the space. But overall it has a, a nice details. This property also comes with air conditioning, a storage locker and two parking. I believe uh, this is part of a complex so I think there's underground parking uh, as well. We have a nice you know subway tile backsplash, uh, nice kitchen cabinetry as well with carpet going up the stairs. This is also a three level unit so as we go in you can see a nice little powder room, uh, stairs that go both upstairs and downstairs here. Uh, another bathroom, uh, this is the primary suite, it's a nice painted uh, back uh, feature wall here as well, with some nice drapery. You can also see that the blinds here are, are nice and higher quality as well and it does look like there are over height ceilings. There was not a floor plan for this property, just from how I'm looking at this, it looks like these windows are a little bit more oversized. So you can see that as we get into the primary ensuite, you have a nice fold glass shower, nice soaker tub with a window there, some tiling. So there's a lot of nice, really uh, nice details here. With that, this is the secondary bedroom. The millwork here again is brought uh, in behind here for the bedroom for some, you know, some of that nice detailing uh, as well. It's perfect for a kid's room, a little patio, 
this uh, the, the jewel of this property too as we'll get to there's a rooftop there's a rooftop patio of over 200 square feet as well that's uh, allocated to this unit they you know really have chosen some nice paint colors here as well to accentuate it I'm not you know a huge fan of this dark railing um, I think you know perhaps keeping everything a white would have made that pop a little bit but you know paint is really easy to change and this is what I'm talking about here this is what you are wanting to see as space you know is at a premium the larger of uh, units that you want the price tag dramatically increases so when you can incorporate some of this outdoor living space this is perfect for you so you can see it has some nice downtown or I shouldn't say downtown but some city views here and lots of space I believe that there's a barbecue off top here as well and uh, there's some nice privacy gates here so you're not crammed uh, in here with your with your neighbor uh, either which is uh, a nice a nice touch so that's it for the photos as we go back here uh, like I said 916,000 is a three bed three bath unit like I said 1506 square feet and a 231 square foot terrace with that gas line I did mention that there is AC in this unit as well, visitor parking, and uh, this unit is fresh on market. What I did too with the, this upcoming Vancouver property, we made sure that uh, it was a fresh market, as a uh, fresh listing as well, just to make sure that uh, everything that we have here is uh, concise. And uh, you know, we see that this is a, a concrete building as well. So not wood frame. So the advantages of a concrete building, you know, it regulates temperature a lot better. Uh, it lasts a lot longer and the maintenance is a lot less than a wood frame uh, structure as well. So uh, as a whole, concrete properties usually sell and retain their value a little bit better than a wood frame building. The next thing I want to show you is just its proximity to Toronto so that as we continue on with this case study, here in this property search we can show you that you know the the time and the distance between uh, the downtown centers of each core are roughly the same so that you know this is a true comparison so as we jump over here to Google Maps this is you know Toronto City Center here this is where we are located so as uh, you can see this is right now um, you know as I'm feeling this, this is 1 42 p.m. Pacific Center time this is right during rush hour traffic in Toronto uh, which is quite bad uh, you can see it's all red but this you know you're about 50 minutes out of downtown uh, Toronto and uh, you're at around 21 22 kilometers outside of the city center in my opinion, this is a beautiful listing. Uh, it's a, the building itself is only three years old. I'm not sure of what the warranty providers uh, deal with within Ontario, but here in uh, BC, there's a two, five and 10 year warranty. So when you have that new home, you have that peace of mind. So as we turn things over into Vancouver, I'm gonna take you onto the back end of the MLS so we can conduct our search uh, so you can kind of get a little bit of insight what it looks like on our end as a realtor and then we can produce a model and uh, show you the property that we'll be looking at uh, so that we can continue this side by side so as we jump into the listing here in realtor.ca like I said, this is a Port Moody listing, 173 James Road. And probably what you can see already with these photos, it is definitely not looking like the property in Toronto. So this unit is definitely much older. This is, uh, you can tell from the outside, uh, a wood frame building as well, uh, stucco siding. And uh, as we go through the photos here, you know, I think you can already tell by the first couple that this is definitely not on par with that Toronto listing. Uh, it's nice to see that there's also uh, obviously been some updates done to this property itself. Uh, there is uh, some new flooring here, the, the kitchen and whatnot looks pretty open concept. This property here is a little bit larger, uh, just over 1700 square feet, also has an outdoor patio, uh, but this one is not rooftop. Uh, I think as well, you're going to get a little bit of an outdoor space with this one. As we go through the kitchen here, galley style, not as open concept as the other one, but because of its age, uh, that is to be expected. Uh, they have done some nice touches. You know, you've got the backsplash in here, uh, but the appliances look a little bit older as well. 
the carpet does look like it needs uh, some help as well. But uh, flooring and, and what have you is not uh, the worst thing. As you can see, you know, some of your sight lines, this is more of a nature feel. Port Moody itself is a beautiful uh, municipality located outside of Vancouver. Lots of nature, close to the ocean. So you are most more likely, you know, close to park uh, in this area. And, uh, you know, if uh, wilderness and nature is your thing, this might be a really good landing spot for you. Uh, as we continue on, um, you know, you have some of that original hardwood flooring here, uh, you know, nice size dimensions. Another thing to keep in mind, you know, the older buildings will have larger rooms, larger square footage as they build now. They want to cram everything down into these developments. So square footage for townhouses, apartments continue to be smaller and smaller. So sometimes if you want that larger feel or larger dimensions to rooms, you are forced to go into something a little bit larger, such as this one here. So. You know, this one's not staged, so it's a little bit harder to visualize what your, you know, what your home could look like. Um, but for the most part, you know, they've done some, you know, nice updates to it. I think there's still room for uh, some other things to happen. I think this is down in the basement and you do get a little bit of a backyard. So if you have a, you know, a dog or a cat, um, it does look like it's fenced um, back there. So that uh, is a nice feature uh, to have as well and a bonus space to have out here, out of your down uh, basement. There's an unfinished part of the basement too for some storage. Uh, maybe you want to put a gym in there, things of that nature. So uh, here's another uh, portion. You can tell by you know the moss and the trees here uh, that this is probably a northern exposure because of the moss uh, and uh, the trees in there blocking uh, blocking the sun. But uh, with some you know manual labor, you can get in there and uh, make a nice little spot for you and your family in there. Uh, there's also uh, a kids playground, so this is a family friendly uh, complex as well. As we get into uh, some of the specs here, like I said, 910,000, uh, they are doing opens this weekend, three beds, two baths, and uh, when I read to the description here, 1,743 total square footage, engineered hardwood, so that's not a vinyl in there either. So as you can see between the two properties, it is quite clear which one the winner is in terms of structure and features and details. It is a no brainer. You know, if you're wanting to pay $6,000 more to get a property that is just three years old, as opposed to something built in 1979, obviously with any property decision, you have to take uh, into effect the neighborhood because that is huge as well. But this, for the sake of this exercise, I try to keep both properties at the same amount of distance from the city center. Uh, if you live in any of these communities, whether it's in Port Moody or uh, in the area in Toronto that we highlighted, I'd love to hear your feedback. What are the pros and cons of each area and where you would rather live? Uh, you know, the whole point of this exercise was to show you exactly how close to the city you could live with a million dollars and what exactly you can buy for a million dollars. Property pricing is extremely expensive in both of these cities. If you're leaning more to Toronto, I have referral partners out there, so let me know. But if you are wanting to make a move to Vancouver, sell or invest, make sure you get in touch with me. I'd love to partner with you and, and talk about your goals. Uh, if you're even wanting to uh, make an appointment for this property in Port Moody this weekend, let me know and I can make it happen. But after all, this video is just here to help you with your due diligence. I'd love to hear your feedback, the pros and cons of both of these properties, as well as what kind of property tour you would like me to do next. In any case, my name is Kyle Mark, your Vancouver Realtor. Have a great weekend, everybody.